Hand tremor treatment. Is there a natural way to handle it? I'm going to explain. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg with Wellness for Life. And if you'd like to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So in a previous video, I had a viewer with hand tremors who said that his hand tremors improved after he did some breathing exercises that I had recommended for cold hands and feet. So he had both cold hands and feet and he had hand tremors and he wanted to know, was it possible that working on one could improve the other? So the answer is absolutely yes. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the mechanisms behind that. What happens when you're breathing is you're affecting the frontal lobe. So the frontal lobe is the action part of the brain. It's the executive part. It's the thinking part, abstract thought. It, it manages. It's where motivation is. Most of the things that make you human is because we have a larger and more sophisticated frontal lobe than any other animal on the planet. And something that's really important that we'll get to also in a second is 85% of what that frontal lobe does is it turns things off. It inhibits things. So that's that little blue line here. It shows where things, if it's a minus sign, it means it inhibits, it turns things off. If it's a plus sign, it means it turns things on. So let's talk about a stress response. Let's say that you're standing in the street and you're not really paying attention and you see a bus coming at you. You glance over and your body wants to get out of the way. You don't even have to think about it. The, the, the action is taken care of for you because there is a sympathetic or a fight flight response that's gonna kick in and save your life. So just to simplify things, we'll call the upper brain stem the sympathetic. And that's your, your stress response. So that stress response, before you even really have a chance to think about it, it's going to increase your heart rate, it's going to increase vasoconstriction, and the combination of increased heart rate and vasoconstriction means your blood pressure goes up and the blood travels faster out to the muscles and the body parts that can perform work and get you out of the way. You also get more cortisol because cortisol increases blood sugar and blood sugar, extra blood sugar is good in an emergency. Your body also upregulates LDL, low density lipoproteins, the bad cholesterol, which of course isn't bad, it's absolutely appropriate for different situations. And if you're in an emergency, there's a chance that you're gonna get injured. Cholesterol is part of wound healing and clotting mechanisms. So your body makes sure you get plenty of it. And you're also gonna breathe faster because you wanna get lots of air into your lungs to provide oxygen. So all of these things happen instantaneously in order to save your life. While you're doing that, the upper brain stem, the sympathetic, inhibits the lower brain stem, the parasympathetic. And the reason it does that is that you have limited resources in the body. You only have so much blood. So the brain has to decide, the brain stem actually decides, where does this go? Where is it best used? in this moment. So if you got to get away from a bus, then it's best used in your circulatory and your muscular system. If you're at rest, if you just had a good meal, then the blood is best used to digest food and to support your immune system and handle reproduction and healing. It's an either or. It's like a seesaw. When you have a stress response, the red area, the sympathetic kicks in and it's going to turn off that parasympathetic, the feed breed system, so that you can get that blood, so you can get those resources for the emergency. This is what happens. The sympathetic is always going to override your parasympathetic because a bus coming at you is always more important than digesting your last meal. This is important, but if you don't get away from the bus, you don't get a second chance. Now, the brain, the frontal lobe, has the ability to override this. So first the sympathetic kicks in, it turns off the parasympathetic, and then the frontal lobe 
takes a look at the executive function, it evaluates and it says, okay, getting away from that bus was a good idea, but now we're safe, let's calm things down again. So now that frontal lobe, which is 85% inhibitory, turning things off, it starts to inhibit that stress response. So now your heart rate comes down, your vasoconstriction releases so that you get more vasodilation, so you get more blood flow into the periphery. So all of these things go down, and now that the frontal lobe inhibits the sympathetics, then that's the same thing as stimulating the parasympathetics, because if you turn off something that turns off, that's the same thing as turning something on. So now you're kicking in your digestion, your immune system, reproduction, and so forth. So these are two different states. Whenever you're stressed, then your body is gonna favor the sympathetic side. And part of what it does there, it's also going to send some, take some blood away from the frontal lobe because you don't need all of that right now. The frontal lobe, the parasympathetic, is associated with calm, being calm, having peace, being creative, having abstract thought, being able to do things, and having fine motor skills. So if you're, uh, if you're painting or if you're making a watch or a model airplane, you do that best in the parasympathetic mode. The sympathetic, the, the stress response, it's more about reaction. It puts you back into your animal instincts because you don't have to think, you just have to act, you just have to get out of there. And therefore, gross motor skills are much more useful. You just need to make large movements. And when you have a tremor, that's when the brain doesn't inhibit certain things. The, the ability to have no movement is when things are inhibited. When that frontal lobe is strong enough to turn things off, that's when you have no tremor. Tremor is associated with stress and with gross motor skills. And everyone that has the tremor can probably attest to the fact that when they're stressed, it gets worse. So when you do breathing exercises, when you slow your breath down, especially the out breath, then you're going to activate your parasympathetic nervous system. You're going to activate your frontal lobe you're gonna bring the blood flow back into the frontal lobe. You're gonna develop more inhibition and more calm, peace, creative, fine motor skills. You're gonna improve all the things that have to do with healing. So once you start understanding all these mechanisms, you understand how ingenious the body is and that they're very, very few variables really, that so many conditions, whether it's cold hands or tremor or an ulcer or a poor immune system or erectile dysfunction, that it all fits into this model. And also high blood pressure, cold hands and feet, uh, high cholesterol, all of this fits that same model. And it's not gonna fix everything, but as the simplest thing as breathing can start improving all of it. So it's a central mechanism that we're looking for. And that's what holistic health is all about. It's understanding the central mechanisms and helping the body return to normal. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this sort of content and you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And also, please share this because this is things that people are suffering from. All the things that we're talking about, uh, the symptoms, the degenerative disease, the high blood pressure medication, the cholesterol medication, the antacids, there is a reason. If we just help the body get back to normal, you don't need those and you're allowing the body to function the way it's supposed to. So share this information with as many people as you possibly can if you care about them and you wanna help them live better lives. Thanks for watching.